So from bird feed to whiskey, and you're wondering what it tastes like? Let's find out. Okay, so, um, like I said in the intro of making the whiskey mash, that I'm busy setting up and getting ready to record our uh, the running of the whiskey and then the tasting. So this video is going to be a lot less on how to run the still and more a review of the end product. So how I am going to be using the still for the whiskey run is I have my normal sight glass that I normally have running. So I've got my sight glass with packing. So the packing is in there nice and loose. Um, I will not be running any active reflux and I will also be covering the column to get some of that passive reflux, um, to get less passive reflux out of this one because for whiskey we want flavor. So I just want a little bit of stripping from the packing inside of my sight glass so I get a nice clean product but uh, yeah like I said no active reflux and very little passive reflux as I will be wrapping the column with a blanket of some kind. So yeah, let's get into transferring the, the wash. For those that are interested, here's the wash. It has now clarified, so all the nasty bits and everything has settled out to the bottom. And uh, yeah, there it is. Let's transfer it over. Okay, so with everything transferred and uh, the last little bit as always, left in the bottom of the can or in our fermenter so this last little bit there just leave it behind it's about two liters it is not gonna create any more alcohol for you it's just gonna create trouble so remember leave all of that dead yeast and bentonite and all of the other stuff please just leave it in the bottom of the jar you can recapture your yeast or wash your yeast as they say. Um, I will probably be washing this yeast here. If you guys want to see a video on washing yeast, please pop a comment down below. And yeah, remember to like, comment and subscribe. And uh, yeah, let's get this still running. Okay, there we go. Still's on. You can see the bubbles starting to come to the top now. What I'm going to do for the next 30 minutes or so, I will be checking the temperature and stirring. Once again, I'll be timing everything to ensure I know when my cutoffs and all those other fun things are. But yeah, see you in a couple of minutes when it's ready to cap off still. So this is now ready to go. We've hit 50 degrees and it's time to cap her off. Okay, so with it all capped up and ready to go, we have our uh, column all insulated, our hoses all connected, and as you can see, we have not connected our uh, reflux hose because we're not going to be running any reflux today, and our head temperature is currently sitting at 20 degrees. So yeah. Both elements are still running at full capacity. We will check back on it as soon as we feel the temperature reaching the sight glass. Okay, so there are first trips right off the still. We now about an hour into when we started. Our head temperature is sitting at about 67 degrees centigrade. So um, I'll keep it there for a little while to get as much methanol separation as possible. And then what I'll do is I will increase the voltage going into the one element and allow us to start staking off our hearts and our heads and our hearts and then moving into tails. So yeah, those are first trips. Okay, so it has now been three days since we did the run of the whiskey video. And uh, if you wanna see how we made this mash, this all grain mash for this whiskey, you can check the card up in top here. And uh, yeah, 
So we ended up taking cuts of between 250 to 300 mils between each of the jars. I ended up with 10 jars in total, which is 250 mils of four shots and perceived heads, as well as a ninth jar at the back here that was um, also 250 mils, but that was very tails, so I left it out completely. Uh, also, um, all of the jars all together gave us roughly about two and a half liters of product that we took off the still. In saying that, um, if this is your first time ever running a white dog or a new make or a white whiskey and you're from South Africa, it is very difficult to find something to compare it with. It's not going to taste anything like something that you buy in the store out of a bottle. Because I've tried to look for white whiskies in South Africa and you either have to order them online uh, or you have to go to a speciality liquor store where you can get stuff like that. So yeah, um, just be aware that it's not going to taste or smell anything like the stuff you buy in store. The stuff that you buy in store has been aged and uh, yeah, the barrel does add a lot of character to your whiskey. So yeah, in saying that, what I'm going to do now is I am going to once again give all of these jars a nose. So the jars have been standing closed for about two days. Uh, they were left open for a day to allow some of the harsher uh, aromas to escape. And then I closed them and left them closed for another two days and I didn't shake them or anything. They were just standing around waiting for the taste. So what I'll be doing is I'll be giving a jar a shake, to opening up the lid, taking a sniff, writing down my notes, and then I will give you guys a feedback of all the smells that I have here. Cool. Okay, so let's run through the nose quickly. Um, jar number one, which we, yeah, this is not jar number one, four shots and head, but jar number one over here. Very oats and cereal, um, like when you open up uh, oats packet for the first time, that smell that you get. Uh, second one is, once again, that cereal smell. Uh, as well as some hay. So if you've ever been to a horse stable or something like that, that smell of hay. Um, the, the third one is that raw oats smell and hay as well. Very strong hay smell. Uh, number four was uh, raw oats and grass. So like uh, barnyard type of grass, that kind of smells there. Um, then um, number five has a little bit of that white corn smell. When you open up the bag of white corn, it has that, uh, that powdery kind of uh, starchy smell. It has that coming through as well as like chicken feed. Uh, when you open up a bag of chicken feed, you get that smell. Um, number six was bran. So you get that, that brand like all brand flakes, that kind of stuff, raw oats, and then it's starting to get that grassy, hayy funk coming in. Um, number seven has a, a earthy, oatsy, like when you started cooking the oats type of smell to it. Um, and then the last one over here, um, I think it's a bit too much of the tails for me. I uh, might not be using it, but yeah, it has a very uh, sour, funky smell to it, like uh, uh, almost like your back set. So when you dump your back set, you can get that sour. That's where the sour mash starts 
come from when you start using your backset over and over again. Um, so it has that sour smell that we got from the backset. So I'll see once I've tasted it, maybe there's something in there that I like the taste of. But uh, for now, I think this is going to go the way of jar number nine and it's not going to be used at all. So yeah, I'm going to grab my straw over here and I'm going to taste. Okay, so we have now tasted all of them. I did give them a nose again after diluting them a bit with water. That tends to open up uh, some of the flavors and that type of stuff some more. Um, so what we ended up with, jar number one, oats, sweet. So when I say sweet, I mean not sugary sweet, like sweet corn type of that, that kind of sweet. Uh, number two, has some oats, has some hay, like when you put a piece of hay in your mouth and you chew on it, it has that little sweet uh, taste to it. Uh, number three, raw oats, hay sweetness again. Number four uh, was more of a cooked oats type of sweetness, or not sweetness, but that cooked oats flavor with, uh, I don't know if you've ever done this, but for me, it was like when you pull a blade of grass out and you have that little white piece of the stem at the bottom there and you bite that off. It has that earthy sweetness to it. Um, so that gave uh, a ton of that in jar number four. Number five, once again, went back to the raw oats, but more of the, the, the husks and that type of stuff that we left in. That I was hoping pulls through quite a lot and it did. Jar number six, uh, that, un that cooked oats flavor that I tasted when I was scooping the stuff over. That flavor there, that cooked oats flavor came through in jar number six over here. Jar number seven was oats uh, and some of that corn that we put in there. Uh, the corn didn't show up a lot on the taste, to be honest. I think next time I will gel my corn as well to impart more of those flavors into the mash. And then, last but not least, jar number eight, like I said, is quite tailsy. Um, it has a lot of that funk in it, uh, but there is some good grass sweetness flavors at the back as you finish off in there so i think i'll be using half of it uh and yeah the rest they all go in and uh dilute it down with a little bit of water and aerate it and taste it so yeah let's get to that That has a good kick still. Um, and yeah, just to repeat, if you ever make your own whiskey and you still have your white whiskey or your new make or your white dog or whatever you want to call it, remember it is not going to taste like the stuff that you buy out of a bottle. The stuff that goes into a cast or that has been matured tastes completely different to what your product is here. It will be like comparing grapes to the end product of the wine. Um, or your bidblitz compared to the end product of a brandy. It is completely different. The character changes. There's nuances and flavors that get added when it goes into a cast and that's why it goes in there for so long into a barrel or a cast or whatever 
So yeah, um, you can expect quite good flavors out of this, but it's not going to be out of the bottle whiskey. The Americans um, on the channel um, that has access to your new make or your white dog whiskeys and that type of stuff, they will be able to compare this to something. But we are in South Africa, unfortunately, there's nothing to compare it to unless you distill your own spirits or you have access to somewhere where they make whiskey and you can taste this for the first time. So other kind of things, um, if you ever make like a UJSSM or something like that, that's a hybrid whiskey where you add sugar into it uh, and you either use pre-gelled grains or you use a, uh, a grain as your flavoring or the corn as your flavoring and that yes it will have a completely different taste it will have a lot sweeter taste than this has so yeah all grains you can't expect that syrupy sweetness and that type of stuff unless you're going into speciality malts and so on and so forth but yeah so just to recap quick guys this is not the kind of flavors that you will get out of a bottle unless you know new make. Other than that, um, what you can go on doing with this stuff now is you can go and make like a nice apple pie whiskey or a, a flavored whiskey of some kind, adding some uh, hard candies, different kind of flavors of hard candies into this thing. Um, you can add your... Uh, wood stays and that type of stuff to age it inside of the bottle and so on. In saying that, pop a comment down in the description telling me what you think I should be doing with this specific batch here and I will do it, test it and make a video on it and let you guys know how it turns out. So yeah, thank you once again for sticking around till the end um, and yeah, like, comment, subscribe as always and uh, keep on making some like a stuff to drink. Have a good day.